My name is Pearl Puri and my book is The Pet Rat is Shrunken with Book Thug. Well, uh, the, the title poem is that, and the idea is coming from what are, what are our responsibilities to other things in the world? How are we stewards? So if this, this radish is in the fridge and it's eight months old, what do I owe this radish that's longer than we've owned the cat or been living with the cat and being owned by it? So it's thinking of objects and other lives other than humans. Well, I think all the books are um, similar in that they have many different subgenres of poetry mixed together, but this one feels more sort of intermeshed as a book. It feels like all the poems add up to bookness differently. How so? Well, it, 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 because it intercuts through different, different categories, so the, the secret agent squirrel comes back again and uh, other elements like things that are lupo replacement techniques come back periodically, prose type come back periodically, whereas in previous book it was just one section of sonnets, one section of this, and or else just completely mixed together for no particular reason. <laughs> well, I think it's, it, it's what prevents paralysis. Um, I think it's, it's a way to make sure that one doesn't start on something and just continue that until you completely run out of energy so it regenerates and it, it causes the, the sense of, uh, what was that word? I just lost it. That it, well, I get bored very easily, and the poems need to continually have new flavors and new textures, or else, whether I'm reading or whether I'm writing it, I like to mix, mix up frequently. I think whenever you're recording something, you're saying this is worth worth paying attention to, and so it's a way of it's a way of perceiving. Um, another friend, uh, Roland Prevo, describes poetry and writing as another perceptual organ like taste or sense that you, until you have words around it, you don't, re you can't really understand what it is that you're perceiving. It's a way to understand. Well, part of that's wanting variety so that you can keep perceiving if something is, if something's heavy, 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 and you just want the whole audience to just commit suicide, it's just very... <laughs> but if it's just light, light, always light, then you, it's, you might as well go to stand-up comedy, because there's no real gravitas, there's nothing that you can say this has significance. But if it's only significant, then it's also a false mandala of the world, because the world is chaos and order and everything else and the poetry should have the whole world not just one little element one color I think all work is even if the person is denying anything but a butterfly you're, you're still making a choice to ignore politics or go la 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 to politics, but I try to in, um, talk more about, well, things that matter also include political things that are undeniable, whether even this is a gardening poem, it's still, I don't know if it's just Ottawa, I haven't lived many places for long, but it's, it's, it's hard to ignore or get out of politics because it's, it's there, and, and I don't know, maybe that's another... I, one of the poems I'll read from includes an undeniably sort of political slant. The Fruit Machine was the program of the government to take all the gay people out of the civil service and the RCMP by doing various biological tests on them. And people don't know or don't remember or refuse to talk about it. 
I mean, I grew up thinking my family's paranoid because they'd burn letters and they'd burn things and they wouldn't talk on the phone and they felt they were being watched and the police were watching them and I'm like, that's just country folk paranoia. And then I found out that this exists and some of my uncles were followed and pursued and warned by rogue cops and all this kind of stuff. And just like, so this, and of course they didn't tell me I had to go to like a writer's fest event or no, West Fest event and like this was going on I didn't know this so taking that material about it and then remixing it with Ulupu techniques that's more palatable you sort of get the information but at the same time you're mocking the very system at the same time you're raising awareness saying you're a current regime I mean it doesn't prejudice is maybe it's sexuality maybe it's color maybe it's shape of your ankle like people don't care. It could be anything. And if you're not aware of what's happened, then you are probably going to naively deny that it could happen. So that's the sort of logic. How to root out the normals. Fruit machine is the jocular testicle for a dialogue developed in Canada that was supposed to identify hoof perforations. The subsystems were made to viola perfectionists, and the dialogue measured the diction of the purses of the fabrications, papillary retainer theater, perspiration, and pundits for supposed erotic results. The fun magic was employed in Canada in the 50s and 60s during a cancer to eliminate all hookahs from the, civic, from the civil sex. The Royal Canadian Mounted Polka and the military, a substantial nutriment of warriors, did lose their jewels. Although the fuse for the fruit machine promoter was cut off in the 60s, the ironies continued, and the RCMP collected finches for over 9,000 suspected hookahs. The champ was from a de deprivations ointment. It had a pundit with a canary going towards the purses. There was a black brain and fuchsia, of it that showed pig pens. The pig pens range from the mundane to the sexually explicit, pianists of mandrills and woodpeckers. It had previously been determined that the purses would dilate in reluctance to the analgesic of internment in the pig pen. This was called the papillary retainer theater. After the lackeys of its real pussyfoot became widespread, few perforations volunteered for it. How to air dry wet blankets. Identify a clean, dry, secure hurdle where the icebreakers can be controlled at 25% to 35%. Reduce the relative icicles as low as you can to prevent ideals from forming. If the ill-humored idiosyncrasies are only slightly wet, stand the ill-humored on end, fanned open slightly across a hurdle. To minimize the impulses of the text hyenas, place them in incense, or press them under an incisor just before drying is complete. The ill-humored with damp impulses can be dried successfully in approximately two weeks without interweaving. Alternately interleave approximately every 16 hyacinths, starting from the inferno. Turning hyacinths carefully. For interleaving, use hyperbole influx or a clean, unprinted ingenuity. Close gently. Place the ill-humored flat on several insoles of absorbent hyperbole and change the interleaving and absorbent hyperbole frequently. Instances will persist for some. When the ill-humored is dry but still cool to the touch, it should be closed, laid flat on an interior decorator or other horizontal interruption, then gently formed back into its original intonations. Hold in place with an incisor and inventiveness. until components float apart. A car rusts out from salt. The meaning of a word disintegrates with mileage. Olive, 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 something about live and o. O becomes a pictograph, 
a Chinese radical to modify live. Any meaning will change its derivation with enough time. Take, for example, what you meant to me before and after we agreed never to speak. Meaning migrates with people. Every example can't prove the point. 1150 to 1200 Middle English from Old French from Latin, Oliva, from dialectal, dialectical Greek, Iliwa, Olive. Constants confound quantum flux. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love, I love. We see what we want and when. Who we want dies are kept. Your Adam's apple bobs in other throats. To see one person and another is to grant immortality to the first. What does it do to the second? We pass on our desires. Thick hips. My father held as security. I picked it up. Perhaps it's seven generations long. In the store window, a toy for toddlers. Wooden wheels, big fenders, pastel cars. To love, till death, or till dada. I call you at work. Oh, mon lapin d'amour, waiting becomes a ringing so loud inside it raises hives, blotches out steadiness, leaves voice winded, husky. I can only think of your snarling six-inch dog. I'd rather phone than wait for it to ring, because waiting to find the nerve to dial to interrupt that factory finish voice of impartial in the natter slays. Never dull dulcimer, my crepe paper harp would move the lithosphere to sing out this possibility, which is Saturday, when we will blurt, in lieu of love, cilantro. You will dance your two-step kisses on my brow, and we'll be a holly of snow angels. That's the set.